the Fantasy Six Pack Hour with your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. Alright, alright, welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of Fantasy Six Pack dot net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What is up, man? Huh. Long day. Ready to pod. That's about <laughs> it. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I mean, I had a decent day. Beer and took, pod. I took the day off of work. Went down to the winery that my wife and I got married at and uh, had a glass of wine or two with her and... Uh, Feeling pretty good, man. Ready to do this. Nice. So. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> uh, well. So we got Giants in New England on right now. Uh, it is fourteen to seven, New England. Uh, we just we just saw a uh, a tipped tip drill catch by Golden Tate that went sixty plus yards for the touchdown. So um, kicking myself for not starting him now, but. What are you going to do? Um, thoughts on this game, though? I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, New England's offense hasn't really been crushing it like I thought they would. They One of their touchdowns is a block punt touchdown. So, I mean, what do you... Well, they almost had an interception return touchdown, yeah. too. I mean, I their defense is just outstanding this They're year. also playing nobody so far. Uh, so. It, well, yeah, exactly. But, I mean it's well Edelman's been getting a ton of targets, a ton of balls. Mm-hmm. So I like that for one of my teams, my dynasty team. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I wrote down here, not as exciting as the NLDS games from last night, but then that Tate touchdown happened. So it's like, well, okay, maybe it's a little better. <laughs> but, nah, dude, that game, but, I didn't get to watch it. I just, Oh, but it was, uh, it was, it was oh, snap. So, oh, run, bro. Run. Right, right. Oh, 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 man. Hmm. Okay. So, oh. yeah, it's it's right up there. So, it is now 14 uh, 14, Giants. <laughs> right up there with the NLD. Fumble. Tom Brady. Oh, uh, man. That's a down. defensive yeah. powerhouse. Game. Daniel Dimes going uh, gonna to pull an Eli and upset oh, the Patriots. <laughs> So yeah. I told you, I told you guys on Slack, he's gonna, uh, what is it? Summon uh, the the ghost of David Tyree's helmet catch, and uh, somehow make it make it happen. Well, Golden Tate, get, Golden get, Tate will be the David, say, David yeah. Tyree. Um, all right, man. Well, so we got a so, we got anyway. a full show as usual. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna change things up today. We're gonna let you kind of do the the lead host i guess if you want to call it that uh but first before we get into that let's do our beer of the week mm, beer yeah uh, so i'll i'll chip in here first and so you can just take over from here so i'm doing a uh one that i've had before but i'll be honest i was pretty lazy this week and didn't get to the store um but sierra nevada hot bullet double ipa what i think you just had this recently too uh but it's it's pretty good uh, I think it's a fairly newly released beer by them too, um, but I do give this. Uh, I have not checked it in today, but I think I give it a four on Untapped. It's it's solid, man. I, I like this one a lot. Yeah, I had um, I had the Hop Hunter IPA. Mm. Uh, That's right. Three four three four weeks ago. Um, yeah. I I don't think I've had this one yet. I'm. Yeah, I mean, I good. love Sierra Nevada's beer, so I, I can actually only give it three and three quarters, but it's still good. But it's still good. Uh, I like that's it. good enough. That's, that's, yeah. that's drinkable. Nice. Um, so I myself uh, am dipping into uh, one of the random beer packs that I bought last week. Uh, Offshoot Beer Company is the uh, the brewery, and it's their Retreat Hazy Double IPA. Um, got a little guy in the water with some jellyfish. All right. Nice artwork on the can, I guess. It's a 8.6 ABV. Um, it's good, man. Uh, it's, it's not like, 
super heavy. I mean, I know I feel like more of the hazies are on a little more on the lighter side, but it's uh, mm. it's it's pretty easy drinking. Um, Not recently. Know, That's some, what I've seen. What? The hazies are on the lighter side. That's definitely not what I've seen lately. I uh, I've been getting some pretty heavy ones lately. <laughs> I mean, well, oh, heavy like, on the ABV, oh, but right. like the oh, okay, I got you. Flavoring I got you. for them, I to me, I feel like is a little bit lighter. But gotcha, gotcha. Okay, wasn't wasn't falling you there. <laughs> Swirling around your mouth like it's yeah. I mean, it's it's good. The dirt notes are just very uh, overpowering. Moving know, on. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, we like, so, we like beer, ladies and gentlemen. All week right, six buys. On. We'll uh, we'll start with that. So um, week six notes. Do it, man. Yeah, notes, notes, and uh, news leading up to week six. Here, the the bye week is upon us again, and uh, this time we actually have four teams off: the Buffalo Bills, Chicago Bears, the Indianapolis Kansas City Killing Colts. And the Oakland Raiders. Um, I I don't know. I mean, that's 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 pretty much it. I mean, it, it, you you think of those four teams. I mean, eh, you might keep Chicago out of it, but I mean, but there's not know. a lot of guys that you really think about. But then you go and look at your team, and you're like, ah, oh, damn it, they're on the bye. Ah, I mean, Josh the Jacobs, T.Y. Hill, I mean, there's Marlon there's Mack, a lot of guys. Lee Montgomery, jo- uh, Josh Allen, yeah. Ro- Allen Robinson. Uh, dude, there's there's some dudes. Robinson had a huge <laughs> week last week too. Oh, so I know, yeah, I guess some 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 quality. I mean, Jacoby Brissett Been had good, a, having a pretty Been decent good. season. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a bit of a bit of a hit you know i think next week is a pretty big week for buys week nine is pretty bad yeah, and week, nine is huge. week 12 uh actually week 10 i think is pretty bad too so they they seem to shuffle them up pretty good i guess but um big headlines though coming coming into this week really uh, that i wrote down here is is just all the different trade talk i mean we've got Trade talk abound is, is how I put it on here. It's uh, and two of those teams that are on the buy just made a deal between uh, Buffalo and Oakland. Uh, Buffalo sending Zay Jones uh, to Oakland. I mean, Zay Jones is he's got some promise and potential, but he hasn't really you know gotten close to his ceiling. I feel like I mean he's shown shown a few flashes here and there in Buffalo, but he's also had kind of inconsistent quarterback play. So that's kind of hurt him. I mean, he I mean, was pretty solid last year. Um, if I want to say he was like wide receiver 35 or something like that, which might... that's, that's better than, uh, than where I had him pegged then, I guess. I mean, I, dude, he had like a monster end of the season. I'm trying to pull it yeah. up now. Um, you know, obviously, what? Say Jones is just. I mean, I I don't I don't love it, um, and don't really care for it. Obviously, but it's. Hey, if 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 you're in obviously in deeper leagues and things like that, I mean, I think you could do a lot worse with your back end of your bench flyers. You know, type of thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking true. at wide receivers now, and I'm looking up Zay Jones. 46, okay? Uh, All right. That's, so, one, that's one through 16. So, but if I do, like, 10 solid. through 16, I'm, I'm interested here. Uh, I did not do this research because, like I said, I was out most of the day. So, yeah, uh, forgive me, everybody. Time. Wide receiver 33 from week 10 through 16. Not bad, man. He had some big weeks, man. He really did. Uh, yeah. It, it was, and and then of course this year, you know, the Bills went out and got a couple of guys, right? I mean, they went out and got Beasley. They went out and got John mm-hmm. Brown, and Zay Jones just became a nobody. Um, yeah. And I was kind of curious as to how that was going to affect Zay Jones, and obviously we've seen it. Uh, he's just really done nothing. But I mean, I <laughs> think in Oakland, gone, obviously, man. like Tyro Williams. Is, is the main yeah. guy. A lot of people like Hunter Renfro. He hasn't really done a ton. I don't. I think Hunter Renfro is going to stay in the slot, and this just gives them another kind of burner 
guy like Tyrell on the outside. So I, yeah. it could be interesting. I'm not like I'm not going crazy over it. I'm not dropping anybody who's worth a damn. But in deeper leagues, um, why not? So, yeah, I mean, I I feel like he's he's worth a flyer in in a deeper league. I agree. Like maybe as a bi week fill in if you're really desperate and and get hit hard. But I mean, because of his speed and and ability, you know him being on the opposite side of Tyrell, they could just really be trying to stretch the field, trying to open things up for Jacobs more now. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I think it'll, it'll help, <clears throat> help his value some. Um, I wonder if it hurts I mean, Waller. Maybe not right away, but I wonder if this, you know, this I, could, could yeah. take away targets from Waller. That'd be the only concern I have as a, you know, if I was a Waller owner. Probably, but, I, I I don't know. I mean, I think I think Waller's still going to be okay. Yeah. And maybe a I small agree. Maybe a small bump down. But so the next couple names we got here, um, Jalen Ramsey. We kind of already talked about. Who knows? I I don't think he's getting dealt. I mean, I'd love to see him in an Eagles uniform, but I don't want the Eagles to just mortgage their entire future for him. I mean, if Jacksonville is coming out and saying we're not going to even trade him for five first-round picks, a you're full of s. There's no way that you would turn down five picks, um, you know, first rounders for him. So I, I just think that Jacksonville doesn't necessarily want to get rid of him. He may finally even play this week. Um, I mean, the guy's 24. He's, he's obviously a stud at his position, and that's why he's garnering this interest and this talk. But I, I just don't I don't know if, if he's going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, A.J. Green is the next guy I got here. Um, I mean, you've seen what, what Cincinnati's done without him so far this year. They just signed Not Boyd to a big much. contract. Um. I mean, Boyd's been great. Uh, Ross was good for the first two games, and then he fell back into realizing his name's John Ross. Um, <laughs> and got hurt. <laughs> and then, yeah, he's like, all right, right, right I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, guys. Um, and uh, and Alden Tate was, you know, last last week's darling pickup, and he did okay. I mean, he didn't have a great game, but... He scored, but that's the only thing that's average his day. Yeah. yeah I don't, AJ Green there. thing's interesting, because... They also saying that he he practiced limited, so he sounds like he's close to returning. It doesn't sound like it's going to happen this week, yeah. but um, you know we're we're looking at a guy who is obviously up there in age, right, thirty one. Uh-huh. Um, and Cincinnati's not going anywhere. Should they trade AJ Green? Probably. Will oh. they? I'm not sure. And it sounds like they don't want to. Um. To me, though, like, I mean, I think when you get A.J. Green back, even if he's on Cincy, like, you're just going to expect A.J. Green things until he gets hurt again. That's the unfortunate yeah. part. I mean, that's well, what that's, he's been That's the last part of A.J. AJ Green things. Um, play so, well, play well, get hurt. Much. So, I don't know. This one's this one's still pretty fresh, but it sounds like yeah. he's not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think they would dump him yet because – at this point, it's hard to get value for him. He hasn't played yet this year. Teams don't know what's going on with the injury, so you got to keep that in mind. And mm-hmm. you know, and, and he is getting up there, but this is a contract year for him. Yeah. So, you know, are they going to re-sign him after this year? After giving all that money to Boyd, maybe. Um, but I don't. I yeah, don't think they're they going to pay him, him and they a don't lot. Sign him pretty dumb Oof. but also at the same time as the Bengals, that's very sensitive want though. to sign him to a long-term deal you're not gonna be good for the next couple of years <laughs> no i mean I they mean, they need so much help on defense you know they have a lot of talent on offense dalton is serviceable i don't know if he's the answer there but he's he's been pretty good this year so far um and we've seen what the receivers do. Mixon just has been disappointing. So yeah, that O line just blows. Oh yeah. So the last guy I got listed here is uh, is Stefan Diggs. 
And I, I just don't know. I don't know what to make of this because him and Thielen, we talked about it and, you know, they were pissed off at cousins and this and that and whatever. So I don't, I don't know. His comment last week was kind of telling, but we'll see what comes of it. I mean, do you think he could be on the move? Man, you know, it, it's interesting because obviously we saw both Thielen and Diggs just complain about the passing game and Cousins and put a lot of blame. Obviously, they all had a little kumbaya moment and they came out passing the ball like crazy. But it all went to Thielen. Yep. Thielen had himself a game, right? He did. And so we haven't heard much from Diggs. Like maybe he's just happy they passed the ball more. But... You know, if he has another couple dud games like this where he's just not getting the ball, it, we could hear chirping again. So, yeah, that's yeah. that's interesting. So, I don't know. I, I think out of Green, Ramsey, and Diggs, I think Diggs would be the one that could get dealt the most just because maybe the Vikings just say, fine, screw you, go away. But he's yeah. so good, though. Like, uh, it would be dumb for them to do it. It, anyway. it would be, but if, if he's going to keep being a major headache in the locker room and on, on the field every time he doesn't get the ball, I mean, he's he's going to turn into OBJ. Like, you know, Pretty much. he's going to start headbutting, you know, side sideline fans and whatever else. So I, I just don't think Minnesota needs it. But um, that, that's about all we got for trades. So let's let's move on to our main topic here get things rolling. Um, what do you want to do with your team right now? Obviously you want to win, but <laughs> what we want to focus on here unless are the teams the that might not be winning right now. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're Miami, <laughs> you're like, praise the bye week. We only lost by uh, 71. I saw some meme and it was like, yeah, bye week 70. 72 to 10. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty damn Miami funny. 10. It's like, damn, that hurts. So those of you who are in Miami's shoes or uh, possibly a one in four team. Um, so not necessarily completely defeated, but you're looking at your fantasy team and there's, there's plenty of reasons why this can happen. Um, you've got, injuries that have plagued your team and you just got hit by everything that hurt you. Um, you could have just poor play uh, by, by guys that you start not getting you points. You could be facing the team every week that just happens to have the career week and puts up the most points in the league that week against you Play who scores the, the second Fullers. most points in the league. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks. Will Fuller, uh, Deshaun Watson, <laughs> And, uh, you know, Michael Thomas, CMC, everybody last week who pretty much just blew the hell up. So what do you do with your team here? If you're sitting at 0 and 5, 1 and 4, I mean, are you, I I have got three different things written here. So let's, let's break them down. Are you looking to trade? So, yeah, let, let me, yeah, so so I see your thing. So so the things you wrote down here, or you know, Scott in the waiver wire, trading, or are you throwing in the towel? Look, I I never give up. I I've had yeah. look I, we just a couple of seasons ago in the fantasy back league, my team was dog shit. I mean, to say the least, it was terrible. And I started out like zero and four or something like that. And I'll tell you the very first thing I did, which was very controversial. Very people, you guys were like, "What in the hell did you just do?" <laughs> I traded the very first thing I did. I traded my best player. I traded Mister Julio Jones. Yeah. I forget who I got back in return, but it was two very, very good players in return. But they were like depth players for the team that I traded to, who was sitting up at four and one or whatever it was. You know, four and oh, I forget. And but it was like, oh my god, you just traded the best player. Like you don't give up the best player in the deal. And I was like, the hell I don't. Those two guys are gonna score almost one and a half times more points 
than Julio Jones any given week. And on the weeks where Julio Jones doesn't perform, and those two both, it could be double, triple the points. The, like, the, I needed pieces. And yeah. that's the first thing you need to do. It's really hard to give up your best player because you're thinking, I can't win without the best player. The hell you can't. At yeah, this point, can. get to the playoffs. Go on a six-game run. You never know, right? Scour that waiver wire. You've got to go hard after it. You've got to go after every piece that could possibly be good. You have to take chances, right? You've got to start dumping. If you've got people like Corey Davis sitting on the back of your bench, no, they are doing you no good. The six points Corey Davis gives you every week is not doing it for you. You've got to go after the guys who are going to possibly be way better. That's what you do as a bottom feeder team in your league. So first thing first, you brought up trade. Yes, 100%. Go after the teams who are 4-1 and one who have the depth. Make sure you give them a good piece. And ask for two. Don't ask for their two best pieces back in return. But ask for their like fifth and sixth best players in return. Trust me. That team's going to listen. Right, especially if they're like, well, if I give up my second best running back, but my third best running back is actually almost just as good, it doesn't hurt that team. But look, if you get to the playoffs, I mean AJ, think about it. How many times in our fantasy six pack league alone have we seen the five or the six seed win the league? Yeah, happens and they were all like the time. what seven and six going into the playoffs. All you gotta do is uh, get there. Seven and six or six and seven. Right? I've had. Yeah. I've won my leagues, you know, as six and seven. So, I mean, how many times? So all you got to do is get there, right? And then you just see every year. You know, I, I think of the league I won last year in Yahoo. My team was was good. I was pretty injury bitten. Um, I probably should have had a better record in the regular season than I did. But regardless, I didn't have a good season record. Um, And then I squeaked into the playoffs. And then right when I got into the playoffs, Gurley went down. Uh, Hunt got suspended, right? All that crap happened. I had both of them. And I'm like, I'm toast. Well, I went out and picked up C.J. Anderson, Damian Williams, you name it. I got both those guys and just steamrolled through the playoffs. So those late season acquisitions, right when the playoffs happen, they're going to be there every single year. It always happens. Yeah. So there's going to be guys at the end of the year that you don't expect to be there, and they're going to win championships. So you've got to just... Don't give up. Like, I I hate it. And the other reason why you don't give up is it just sucks, right? When the when the last place team is sitting there with, like, three injured players or a player on bye against, you know, the fifth place team or even the sixth place team on the last week before playoffs and you're the seventh place team and you're going, man, I can't jump him because you just gave him a freebie win. Like, that's not cool. Like, Honestly, those types of people should be kicked out of the league. I get yeah. it. Your team sucks. You're not going to win at that point, but at least try. You never know. So as a bottom feeder team, those are the types of things I look at doing is trying to wheel and deal. And, yeah, you're going to have to give up some of your best players because in reality, you don't have a lot of good players. But you have to build yeah. depth. You've got to get more pieces back in return than you're giving up to build a actual starting lineup that can compete week on week out. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's the biggest thing, you know, we play this game to be competitive. You need all of your pieces to participate and put up points and, and help you win. But if they're not doing that, or if only one of them is, okay, fine. Get rid of the guy. You know, yeah, it, it hurts to take that hit sometimes, but if you want to get back in the game here and start getting some wins, you need to have more depth that's actually going to put up points comparable to what one person does, mm -hmm. if not more. And and all three of those things, well, two of those you, three, obviously not throwing to, in the towel. But You actually firmly need to believe that the two pieces you're getting back in return are going to outperform the one that you're getting. And the only reason why that team is willing to give up both for one, knowing that the total points is in your favor, is because they've got the depth to 
take on. And getting that one player that they can start is going to actually boost their team because they have the depth. But you getting two yeah. players is going to hurt, help you. I don't usually condone giving up the best player in the deal, but in this is the one of the only ter- times that I do. Yeah, I, I think that you just have to bite the bullet and do it at some point. Trust me, know? giving up Julio Jones that year sucked hard. But it it helped. I almost made the playoffs that year. I went on a like a yeah. I won like five out of the last six games of the year and almost squeaked into the playoffs. It dude, it made a difference. It was incredible. So Yeah, I remember that. I remember talking about that trade and being like you guys were pissed. <laughs> you sure that's what you want to do? You guys like, were what angry. What the hell, dude? I was like, yes, you watch. This is going to work. And it almost did. <laughs> uh, so. But so let's take a look at the other side of the coin here and say you are one of these teams who's, you know, had a successful start. You're sitting at undefeated 5-0 and or you're right there in the thick of things at 4-1. and you know, what are, what are your choices here? Well, again, trade, which we kind of just covered. Uh, you can start looking at handcuffing. Um, typically, you want to handcuff your running backs. I don't really handcuff yeah, no, receivers, there's really no, but... Yeah, there's no reason to handcuff a receiver. You could. I mean, if you really think that it's going to help, but I, there's too many receivers out there that uh, running back is really who you're looking yep. at here. Or do you just say, fuck it? I like my team as is, and I'm just going to stand pat. I mean, Look, what that, what are your options here, or what are you like? So from these that options? that third one is straight up a legit option for you. Um, I am doing it in a few leagues, uh, where I'm like four and one, or I'm like, I mean, I'm three and two, but I've lost like a crazy week last week, right? Like in 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 fantasy six pack league, I lost to. Uh, I lost to Richard. Kudos to him. Congrats to him. But, I mean, he had Russ Wilson. He had McCaffrey. He had Aaron Jones. He had the Eagles defense. Uh, yeah, nobody was beating him. <laughs> I mean, that was like 140 points between four players. It was like, nope. So, yeah, I mean, that happens, right? So, I went from 3-1, and one, should have been 4-1, and one, to 3-2. and two. So my team is still solid. I still have the most points in the league. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do too cute with things. I've got a good team. Um, but what what I what I typically do in those leagues is at that point is I am looking forward at handcuffing. Um, if I've got like a handcuff worthy player. Now I don't own Gurley, so I'm not trying to go out and get Malcolm Brown or guys like that. Um, I don't own like the stud running backs, right? Uh, I think my running back that I have, do I have Cook in ours? I get all my leagues mixed up. Anyway, uh, I've got Cook, but I think Madison is owned somewhere, so I can't do anything. But look, if I owned a Cook and Madison wasn't owned, I'm absolutely putting him on my on my bench and just holding on to him. Because if Cook goes down, I'm screwed if I don't have Madison. There's nobody that can replace him. Um, so handcuffing at this point is super important for you. Now it's going to get tough with all these bye weeks. There's a couple, there's like at least one week where there's six teams on bye, So it gets tough. Um, you know, again, then you, then you look at stuff like trades, right? Um, and it is exactly the opposite of what we just said. It's the other side of the coin here where you can be the team that takes on the Julio Jones or, you know, you, you take on the, um, I don't know, uh, I doubt, look, I look, you could be the team that takes on a Christian McCaffrey if they happen to be on the one and four team, right? And say, look, yeah. you give me McCaffrey, I'll give you a James Conner and a, I don't know, name a random receiver who's like Kenny Galladay. Yeah. Right. Like James got it. Maybe that. Maybe that's not enough. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Tyler Boyd. Hard to get. I mean M- he's been good. McCaffrey would be hard to trade for. Maybe Thielen. go. One, maybe go. Maybe go one lower. <laughs> than McCaffrey. Yeah. But you know what I'm trying to say, though, right? Like Kamara. Get, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Kamara. Take Kamara and give up. You know, 
those those types of players, and you're going to be fine. Like You're taking on the absolute best player, giving up two guys that you can replace Galladay most weeks, right? Like he's not gonna blow up for twenty points every week. He's gonna be at like around ten, whatever. Like you could, you probably can find somebody who can take that. You've probably got depth on your team that could do that. Um, yeah, that type of stuff. So, so you look for those types of trades. Yeah, it it it's hard to improve a different team, but you're improving yours too. And you're you need to start looking ahead toward in setting yourself up to have the best possible playoff lineup there is. Now, I don't get all crazy about playoff schedules, although that does play a part in it, but I'm not trading a very good player just because he has a bad playoff schedule. I will trade that player if I'm getting good players in return. I'm not going to be dumping him just because, oh, this player is probably a not as fantasy valuable, but he's got a much better playoff schedule. No way. I'm not doing that crap. Um, Yeah, I think you, I mean, at this point, I I mean, I I look at, I always look at schedules. I know you do. (laughs) And try to figure out. It does matter. Like it does matter, but I think it does. But I try not to get too wrapped up in, oh, well, you know, this team plays or this, this player plays this defense, this defense, and this defense. And, you know, at this point, I'm not going to take much stock into the fact that those three defenses may be, you know, the top three giving up points to running backs right now. Well, here's the other thing. That's what it is. is. Through six weeks, you still got ten more weeks. Well, here's the other thing: is that in the season, exactly, a lot can change too. Yeah, give me two weeks out, and that, and then Mm -hmm. uh, then I can look at it more. Ten, you know what? Eight weeks out at this point, really, right? Eight weeks out, you have no idea what's going to happen. An entire defensive line could just break their leg right and then that team is going to be roadkill for the running game that potentially yeah. and before wasn't right like right the patriots are steamrolling people on defense right now right and but say a couple of their corners get hurt you know defensive lineman linebacker gets hurt they're totally different defense and they might be easy game so I'm yep. not like it's hard to look now at that kind of stuff I'm just setting myself up with the best possible players yeah. And then it'll all figure itself out. It really will. Um, and, and even even looking at this option um, of the handcuff, yes, you want to start to do it, but don't go crazy. Don't go crazy because you still have six more weeks of bye weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you so need to be able to set roster. You, you have know. to be able to have a starting roster, yeah. unless you're just gonna say, "Meh." Whatever, I'm five and zero oh now. I'll be going into the playoffs at, at you know twelve and one, and I'm okay with that. I'm also assuming willing, you're going to lose that. Yeah, I'm also willing to take on, like we said, for the teams who are struggling right now, not to get cute, not to go after these guys who could like. I mean, don't don't go crazy. Like, don't just pick up every waiver wire guy, right? But at the same time, they need to get a little aggressive. But with these teams like now I wouldn't I wouldn't tinker too much because you have probably good depth there's a reason why you're this this you know you've got this or this record but you've probably got some junk on the back of your bench that you can kind of swap in and out every week yeah. with that as Richard likes to call it the spec ad right go get that stash player right I'm I'm stashing Ty Johnson in one or two leagues just because I'm I have a good record and I can yeah. and I can take the chance on him like potentially earning a bigger role. Um it hasn't worked out so far. Give it a couple more weeks, I might drop him. Yeah. But, you know, I went out in a couple of leagues, I grabbed Chase Edmonds, I grabbed Malcolm Brown cuz I don't know what these injuries are for Gurley and David Johnson are going to be multiple weeks, whatever. Even if they're going to miss this week, I have no idea. But I took a shot because I talked like Randall Cobb. Who cares? <laughs> I can replace they Randall Cobb. Dead weight on your right? roster. I mean, anyway. I can replace like Randall you're Cobb. You're never starting bi- Randall Cobb. He was a bi- even on the bye week. You're like, oh, I don't want man. to. 
<laughs> right. All right. Who else is out there? <laughs> yeah, I might have dropped God that week anyway. On my bye that's week, the thing. So, like, you no can kind of take play. a chance a little more. Maybe it's not even your own handcuff. It's somebody else's handcuff. And dude, yeah. that's super valuable because when Gurley goes down, I'm I'm actively targeting the Gurley owners because I've got Malcolm Brown on a couple different leagues, being like, "Look at what I've got. Do you want any?" <laughs> I mean, yeah. and they should be interested. Why not? They absolutely should be interested. I just don't I know mean, what I could get. Running backs are pretty much a premium and have been. And now that you mention it, I'm going to, boom, pick up Mal- Malcolm Brown because I have an open roster spot in this league where we're 0-5. Why okay. the hell is he not I, owned? He was owned by us earlier in the season oh. and we dropped him because we just weren't starting him or whatever. Um, so I, I just dropped him. I say us cause this is my work league. So there's multiple. I, I'll be honest. I did drop him in one league this past week. And then the news came out the next, that day after waivers ran and said, girl, has got a quad injury, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm putting in the waiver claim to get him back. So no, no guarantees to get him back in that league, but I'm shocked that, He's not owned and like he was snatched up if he was even available on every other league of mine at this point. Yeah. Like, I'm shocked that he's available. Your league is asleep, bro. Um I I didn't even realize he was there until I just looked. I'm like, oh, all right, he's still here. He's yeah. only owned by two percent in Yahoo leagues. What? Yeah. You looking at the right Malcolm Brown? I can't Malcolm right. Brown of the L A R R B. Playing San Fran, yeah, looks like it's the right guy. I mean, I know Daryl uh, Henderson is getting a lot of talk again. Eh, I don't know, whatever. man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not buying it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about that one. Who knows, man? But yeah, so I mean, that's kind of the the, the sort of stuff that that I've done in the past when I'm good and when I've been bad. And does it help? Yes. Does it help all the time? Hell no. But, you know, there's there's no perfect strategy in anything. Like, injuries are going to happen. Poor performance is going to happen. Uh, I mean, I'm sure the teams that drafted Andrew Luck and, and all these guys, like, they were thinking they had awesome teams, and then, well, shit happens. You know, your team sucks. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, that's so the thing. I mean – you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to win. And at some you, point, you gotta get desperate. And uh, you know, that's really the time to do it. When you're, when you're, zero and five and and one and four, you have nothing else to lose. Just the one you thing might I as would, well go out and try these things. Yeah, the one thing I would, I would want to just chime in here. Last thing is, don't, don't trade your best player and get two back. <laughs> Who aren't worth it, dude? It needs to be a good trade. Don't trade just a trade. If you're getting, if you're giving up Julio Jones for like John Brown and Golden Tate, no, 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 no. No. Good God, they're no. not. That's they're, not they're helping you. That's alone. only helping the other team, and the league yeah. will get really mad at you because you just made a four and one team really good and they gave up literally nothing so be smart about your trade and look if you can't get a trade partner and you just end up having a lost season it's a lost season it happens we all lose yeah move on try again next year perfect example of that was uh of the opposite the the top team trading i traded david johnson last year and he had like a sixth or seventh round keeper value coming into this year. I traded him for CMC, who had a first round keeper value. Still worth it because I, I was going to pick him in the first round if he fell to me. So it worked. And that guy was, he did throw in the towel basically. But being a keeper league, you're never really throwing in the towel because yeah, those are you're different. planning for the future. Those are different so, scenarios. Keeper leagues and, and dynasty yeah. leagues and things like that. Those are different when you got tra- draft picks and, and keeper values attached to it. That's a totally different story. I'm yeah. talking pure so, draft leagues at this point. Yeah. We could have a whole show about dynasty trades. If you really <sighs> want to get into it, but uh, now's not the time. 
yeah. So, I mean, that that's pretty much it for that. Just just uh, see where you're at. I mean, and if you're one of those teams kind of in the middle there, still, you, you can active. always be, be better. Be active. Be looking. Be reading the news. See what your players are doing. Ooh. And pick by the pets. Go defense. from there. Did they get that? In, like I, I thought he stepped out, but maybe not. They're calling it an interception. <sighs> I'm loving having the New England defense in awesome. one league of mine. <laughs> yeah, they've been awesome for me in a couple Incredible. of weeks. They literally, like, that was our Ooh, point yeah, that was a output. Pick. Yeah, oh, that was yeah, that was, that was way. All right, let's move on here, man. So, so I know I know, we wanted to get into some injury news. Uh, I think you've got me docked for uh, the first part here. So let me. I, yeah, I just, I didn't change that <laughs> from no, last week. No, that's all week, good. That's so. all good. I just need to find all the right spots here because I had a, you know, Keith is not feeling too hot today, so I'm doing the slides, trying to make sure I don't screw all that up. All right, man. So injuries, we're keeping with your uh, your the your your three bucket of buckets of players. Uh, maybe that wine is catching up to me. Um, <laughs> buckets of bottles of wines and beers and sure injure um, my brain. So out <laughs> or unknown right now. Uh, questionable, I guess, is what we should call it. Um, Sammy Watkins, hamstring injury. He didn't practice again on Thursday, trending toward not playing. So, dude, that's going to be a big boost for Harmon and or Pringle. Um, makes me want some some Pringles, dude. Yeah, I want chips. <laughs> Once you pop. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure he's heard that that joke a few times uh, in his life. Just, just like I've heard. Just a couple. Just like I've heard uh, on Bond a few times. So, yeah, no, how it yeah. is, bro. I'm here. Indeed. Um, Hollywood Brown ankle injury didn't practice on Thursday, so uh, you know he's he's going to be one of those ones where if he gets in like a limited practice, then he's going to be probably fine. Probably good. But yeah. you know, it's one of those ones you got to keep an eye on. Sneed gets the bump if uh, if he's not if he's not on the field. David Johnson, his back like stiffened up on him late in that game this past weekend, so he hasn't practiced yet. And I'll be honest with you, man. Chase Edmonds looked real good. This yeah. could be like I'm already downgrading David Johnson, even if he's on the field, because I think they're just gonna like try to keep him healthy. Um, you, you start David Johnson if he starts, and you probably don't play Chase Edmonds because I think David Johnson will get the vast majority of the carries, but I think he's gonna get less work. Um, but if David Johnson is somehow out, then uh, Chase Edmonds is like just plug him in man go yeah. <laughs> he's been good um yeah. chris herndon uh it sucks dude this one pisses me off because a couple leagues where i was like decimated at tight end oj howard vance mcdonald you name it right i went out a couple weeks early and stashed chris herndon and wait was like all excited week six he's back no nah. no nah. Injured his hamstring, working on his own. He's out likely the next two weeks. Dude, I legit picked up Herndon and Hunter Henry because Hunter Henry's looking like he's nearing a return. And so now I've got to somehow go figure out a – I guess I'm dropping one of those because I'm not keeping three tight ends. And I don't know. I had actually won that league three weeks in a row without a tight end, so I might just try it again. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> uh, it's like me with catchers, dude. Yeah, dude, it's so crazy. I don't need one. Whatever. I mean, let's be honest. Like, how many teams have a tight end? I haven't played the team with Kelsey or Kittle or Ertz in those three weeks, so they don't have an advantage over me. So yeah. my other eight players have performed better than their other eight players. Okay. Um, moving on. Mentioned the girly injury, dealing with a quad injury. Um, he hasn't practiced it either. So obviously, I think it's gonna be Malcolm Brown. But Coach Speak is saying it could be Daryl Henderson. I think it's gonna be Malcolm Brown. Obviously, uh, Kamara has not pract- did not practice today. That was kind of a late addition. So we got to see him get out there. They're saying it's probably yeah. the the last thing I read, which was really late in the day today, was that it it was. They're hoping it's like ankle. There was no word yet. So, like, they're hoping it's not hamstring or calf or something like that. And they're just hoping, like, it's just, 
his ankles giving him fits, right? And he'll be fine. But find out more tomorrow, clearly. And then Mason Rudolph concussion probably could have put this in the likely out category. But, I mean, he's yeah. he's, he's been kind of out there but not doing a whole lot. Uh, Delvin Hodges is going to get the start. I mean, look, Delvin Hodges looked good when he came in last week, but Mason Rudolph looked good when he came in the first week for Big Ben. So yeah, Give him a whole week's worth of practice and see how bad he gets. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's more like give the <laughs> other team play a whole and... week of yeah. game planning against Delvin Hodges and see how he does. So yeah. Juju, Deontay Johnson, Connor, they all get a they all get a knock down, unfortunately, along because and I am only gonna say this because you don't have him listed here. Obviously Jalen Samuels is out four to six weeks. Yeah. Uh knee scope. So that was initially boosting Connor's value, but if Delvin Hodges plays it's maybe right back to where it was. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? So uh although it does give uh, uh an upside to some Benny Snell action, I guess. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so we'll see. I don't know. All right, so the likely out guys we have listed. Um, Devontae Adams still dealing with this toe injury, mm-hmm. turf toe, uh, that he suffered in week four versus Philly. Yeah. Philly, Philly. Um, so he's likely out Monday. He, I saw something today. I think it was on Fantasy yeah, Life yeah. He was app like, or whatever. It's in street clothes, yeah, blah, blah, blah. He ain't practicing. He's done. He's yeah. out. Um, Deshaun, speaking of Philly, Deshaun Jackson is still dealing with this ab injury. Um, looks like he'll, uh, probably, or we'll have to wait another week at least. Hopefully he gets back sooner than later. Um, but this thing's really been dragging ass here. Um, but possible Her, returns that we have, too, man, what's that? Oh yeah, definitely is. I mean, Wentz didn't have a, great game last week against the jets i mean their no. defense was pretty much doing everything <laughs> yeah he didn't have to right? um, but yeah he really didn't have to which is nice because i, I like that he didn't have to do a lot but it's not going to be that easy this week against minnesota so uh some possible returns we've got tyreek hill uh got big red andy reed here he's hoping that his star wideout can log a full practice at some point this week if he does, it's possible he plays Sunday. So, you know, looking back at that Sammy Watkins note, you know, Harmon uh, uh, gets still gets the boost over uh, Pringle there. But I they don't both know. Both could be viable if they're both. Yeah. If Watkins and Hill are both out. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Hill doesn't get back this week, and I'm not optimistic that he definitely will, you know, I think both of those guys are immediate plays. Um, Case Keenum uh, could actually return this week and play against the hapless Dolphins. Um, so that could be the uh, the end of the the Colt McCoy project for for now. Uh, so keep an eye on that if for whatever unknown reason you're actually rostering Case Keenum. Scott um, Fishbowl, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just keep I, going. I, I'm done. Yeah. Keep going. All right, Christian Kirk. <laughs> Uh, we had him listed last week because he missed the game, um, but he is currently listed as probable and should be back for week six. And he's got a fantastic matchup mm-hmm. against Atlanta, uh, who just got torched by, again, Will Fuller. Um, and then the last guy we have listed here is Brandon Cooks. Uh, he went out last week with a concussion. Um but he is likely to play this week. So keep an eye on that. Mm-hmm. And that is a uh, that is a, a wrap for the injuries, unless you have anybody else that you would nope. like to add. That's all I got, man. All right. Well, we're going to skip the uh, Scott Fishbowl waiver review because there really wasn't anybody aside from <laughs> maybe Pringle. I think he went for like 12 bucks in my league. I didn't, I didn't even put anything in. I didn't even... I didn't bother. I didn't, I didn't I did pick, either. There was nothing in my I league. picked a so. couple people up today, but I don't yeah, even no, remember who no, they were because there was, there was I nothing. don't even care. You're right. Move it I don't on. even care. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's uh, round things out here with our week six picks. 
highest scoring, low scoring fantasy games. What you got? Uh, so I I think I'm going the obvious one here, Chiefs Texans. Uh, I mean. You know, they're both just high-flying offenses, although the Chiefs have been slowed down the last couple of weeks. You know, I I, I just don't see it continuing. Uh, the Texans' defense has not been great. The Chiefs' defense, we know, is not very good. So um, th- this, is, this game, I feel like, could easily be in, like, the 60s as a total. Yeah. I mean, based on last week from what the Texans did yeah. uh, with Atlanta, I will uh, I will go ahead and pat myself right back there for calling that one. <laughs> um, yeah, few and far between, so i got to take it when I can. Uh, my highest scoring game here is uh, San Fran at the L.A. Rams. We just talked about Cooks. Whether or not he'll be back, sounds like he will be, so that'll be you know a huge boon for L.A., but, I mean, Cooper Cup's been the guy, man. He's, he's proven me man. wrong because I was not, like, super high on him. I thought that maybe he would still have some, uh, you know, after effects from that injury, and he's been freaking monster this year. So I don't think anybody thought he'd be this good. He's been incredible. Yeah. I thought he'd be all right. You know, I thought he'd be good. But this good? No. Hell no. Yeah, this is, this is just uh, uncharted territories almost. But uh, San Fran, man. They looked real good on Monday night. Um, yes, it did. is a short week for them, but I mean, the guy, the guys, they're just put an awesome game plan together, and they just steamrolled Cleveland. That so running game is incredible for San Fran, dude. It's it really so is. And Jimmy G is looking pretty good. They finally got Kittle pretty involved in the mm-hmm. game. Um, you know, his 20 points wasn't enough for me to overcome my 30 point deficit. So I was really hoping for another 10 points out of him. But after he scored the touchdown, he was like invisible. So, yeah, but I, I think this one could, could really be, I mean, it's a, not a tough division matchup. I think it's just going to be a knockdown drag out game. What you got for low? Uh, so I'm going Titans Broncos. I feel like I'm going to be picking on the Titans or the Broncos most weeks, and now they get to play each other. So why not? Yeah. <laughs> so perfect storm. Um, yeah, I saw that. I was like, oh boy, that's easy. <laughs> um, Done. You know, press the Staples easy button, and um, Titans. Bro- Dude, uh, I mean, Joe Flacco. You, no, not working. I mean, like, look, we're gonna get a Philip Lindsay meh game. Um, yeah, but I mean, uh, the defenses are still pretty solid for these teams. The offenses just can't really get it going outside of like, you know, Derrick Henry and Philip Lindsay, and maybe like Court and Sutton. Like, I just, but it's just not enough, like, to make this a very appealing game. And especially in DFS, like, I would run away from this game. Yeah, not much stacking going on with this matchup. No, definitely not. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking at the uh, Pittsburgh at uh, the other L.A. team, the L.A. Chargers. Um, I mean, we talked about Rudolph potentially being in or out. You know, they lost Samuels. I, I just think Pittsburgh's just taken a lot on injury-wise so mm-hmm. far this year. And it's really just screwing with everything that they've got going on chemistry wise. So, um, you know, hopefully Connor can have a decent game, but I, other than that, I just, I mean, I'm downgrading Juju this week. Um, you know, Washington, I think actually he might have some injury issues going on that we didn't mention, but oh, I yeah. saw that. I did yeah. see that one. I heard they write so it I, down. Yeah. Um, so, that. You know, maybe we have a Dante Moncrief sighting. Who knows? No, uh, don't, dude. Don't, don't. Does not get crazy. <laughs> it's all that's you. what I'm all about, man. <laughs> I'm all about getting some crazy picks right how many, now. How many beers have you had today? <laughs> Just the one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Let's let's move this thing on. All right. Sleepers busts. Who we got? So my quarterback is going to be Mr. Kyle Allen. Um, like I know he's not, you know, lighting it up, but he's 
but he's doing all right. Um, and this week he gets Tampa Bay, who, I mean, we all know they're just not very good. So if he's gonna if he's gonna repeat that twenty four point performance that he had at Arizona in week three, this is the week he's gonna do it. So I'm going with Mr. Kyle Allen. Yeah, I like that pick. Uh, that game will be played in foggy London town. Hey, and weird shit happens in London, dude. <laughs> yep. Yes. Um, Jacksonville I'm going games when they suck in London. So exactly. Speaking of Jacksonville, I'm going with the mustache Minshew. I mean, whatever. I don't care how he plays. He looks phenomenal with that amazing. stash. So just get out there. And <laughs> don't like wear that is. helmet. Don't wear that helmet. Yeah, just get it going. <laughs> no, I, I, I just, this just got weird. Sorry, uh, guys. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to edit that and redo this part. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've, I've kind of lost. <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. I'm just going to move on to my running back. You good? Just go with the running back. All right, man. I'm going with the guy you kind of alluded to earlier, and that's Mr. Benny Snell. Uh, yeah. I mean, the picking sleeper running backs is actually really hard. I mean, I try not to pick, you know, we, we, we try to say, let's pick somebody outside of the top 30. So I try not to pick, you know, number 31, who's LaShawn McCoy. Like, well, duh. Um, yeah. I try to go a little farther down and be interesting. And there's not a lot of interesting down there. And, you know, the obvious ones are Malcolm Brown and um, I'm, I'm trying to think of who, who else it is right now. Um, uh, damn it! I I wrote them in the notes. I'll just go look at the what? notes. Um, uh, yeah, Chase Edmonds, and yeah. obviously McCaffrey kind of popped up on the interview report. We forgot to mention that too. But you know, I I was trying not to pick his backup either because those are the obvious ones. Everybody knows. Oh look, if if those guys are down, obviously Reggie Bonifon for Carolina is gonna be the guy. Yeah, okay, duh. So let's pick a guy who isn't obvious, and I'm going to go with Benny Snell. And, yes, maybe slightly obvious, but nobody is on this train. I mean, he's ranked 56th, and we've seen it, right? They're not giving a full workload to Connor. They were incorporating Samuel a lot. Will they do exactly the same for Snell? No. But he's going to get – I think he's going to get some work. And, you know – Pop one in they the could. end zone. I mean, Why they, not? They could. I mean, they like this guy coming into the season. You they know, did. obviously they they drafted him and you know saw something in him. Mm-hmm. I think he could have an impact if if he gets enough touches. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that split goes. Um, but looking at uh, mine, I did go with the number thirty running back, uh, and that is Adrian Peterson. <laughs> I just didn't really like a lot of the sleeper guys that no, were down there. So it's, it's like, a, it's tough, dude. Ah, this is garbage. <laughs> but AP is, you know, really hasn't done much. And, um, oh, that was the headline that we actually didn't even talk about. Jay Gruden got fired, everybody. Um, so now Bill Callahan takes over for the Redskins and he wants to put a focus on the run. So, why not? Okay. What, what was that? What was that? Uh, somebody put a screenshot in. Uh, here we go. Just Grant Paulson tweeted, just turned on Bill Callahan's press conference in time to hear him say his offense is more about rush attempts than yards per carry. He also <laughs> said, if you run the ball more times than your opponent, you'll probably beat them. I mean, it's it's genius. I don't, I don't I know how else to describe no it. No words, none. I mean, it, it it's just almost amazing to me why this guy is not a head coach already somewhere else, and that Washington has just <laughs> been blessed. You know, like hashtag blessed to have Bill Callahan uh, coming uh, out and mm. and running this team. Yeah, so he wants to run the ball. He wants rushing attempts. That's good. When you fall behind you 24 AP. to 0, All day. not going to happen. Yeah. Okay, moving he's on. Gonna be, he's going right. to be his, uh, a real name of AD, which is all day. 
bring sure. it. All right, man. Uh, so my sleeper receiver, Sammy Darnold is back, dude. So it's Mr. Jameson Crowder time again. I mean, we're going to see another 14 catch day out of him. Probably not, but Hey, I liked Crowder coming in. It hasn't worked out so far because they've been dealing with Luke Falk. Um, so now that Darnold's back, uh, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to see, you know, Crowder step up and be, be the player. I thought he was supposed to be this year. The reemergence. I like, yeah, it. I literally, I, I pretty sure. Let me just double check some stats here. All right. Let me go back over here. Okay. That's not the letter I want. There we go. So, yeah, I literally just went into a little bit of a, not really panic mode, I guess, but uh, I decided that I was going to make a move, and I went ahead and picked up the guy that I have listed here, Mr. Devontae Parker, Ooh. while dropping the guy you had listed in Crowder. Because it totally wasn't even really thinking about the – the Darnold being back. Oh. Um, but uh, Devontae Parker, I, I get it. I'm, I'm, I hear what you're saying. Is, I hear the like groans and moans. Like a one week, this is a one week pickup, right? I mean, there's just, uh, yeah, I'm not, I know. I don't need him on that team. <laughs> I, have, I was going to say, what? This is, is the team that? that I traded David Johnson for CMC. Okay. I also have Kamara. I also have Michael Thomas. All right. I also have Evan Ingram. Who's not playing. Thanks. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, no problem. I'm that four and one guy, okay, in that league. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Devontae Parker. Look, he had a good game last week. Um, Rosen is the X factor here because you never know what you're going to get out of him. But they're playing the Redskins. I was very tempted to put Redskins Miami as my highest scoring fantasy game. Uh, dude, you have no idea because how, how, much, how I was tempted. Also, <laughs> it's. <laughs> I mean, we okay. might as well just forget the two that we talked about. It's going to be Redskins, Miami. No defense, no kickers. It's going to be like a is great both fantasy offenses league. Offenses are so bad too. So it's like really, yeah, I don't know if I can really get on board. I don't know. That's why I didn't no, do it. But, but I would, yeah. would I be surprised? No. No, there, there's always one game a week that you're like, damn, like shit, that game was ridiculous. Yeah. And it's and it's never the one you think it is. So I don't know. Maybe that's that's the one this week. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? All right. So I'm going with Parker. All right. I think we got our busts. Yeah. So I'm going Mr. Jared Goff. I know you called this one your highest scoring game, but yeah. dude, I'm kinda worried, man. San Fran's defense is for real, dude. And golf is not the golf of last year. This offense isn't the no. same as last year. I mean, golf is, you know, he scored over 20 points once. Yeah, he's been at 19 twice, so you're taking it. You're okay with it. Um, but he's just not lighting it up like he did last year. He didn't have – he doesn't – he's not having those monster games. Even the game he's 24 points, um, you know, 500 yards – with three interceptions and, and a fumble. Like, I don't know. Just this actually, I was kind of the opposite for you with this game. I was kind of on the, I don't think this is going to be a very high score game. I think the point total is like 50 or 51, maybe lower than that, but it was pretty high. And I was like, man, uh, I, I, I legit think it could be under, that and yeah. I just and so that that's one of the reasons why I think Goff will be a bust this week. He's ranked in the top ten, I think, right now. Yeah, he was sitting right at ten, I believe. Yeah, oh, um, over under so, forty nine. So I was I was close. So that's that's close. That's pretty high. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna go with Rogers. Uh, he's been your he was yours last week i think i had him on there a few weeks back too 
it, like we're picking out of the top 10, so we're going to have repeats, but yeah. uh, his I, dude, Detroit coming off a bye week, you know, green Bay, obviously coming off a big win against Dallas. Um, but they let that game slip from, for a little bit and, you know, gave Dallas some hope. So, I think Detroit could win this game. Um, I don't think they will, but I, I think they could. So I just, I just don't really like Rogers this year though. I, you know, we've talked about it over and over again. So I think that, uh, that he's my pick for this week. Yeah. It's another I average mean, I said week, it last especially week. without Devante. I'll, I said it last week. I'll say it again. I think we're seeing Aaron Rodgers just turning into an average fantasy quarterback and it's not because he isn't good it's just this offense is different and that's all this team is different so it, it's hard to not start him but man if you've got a if you've got a decent backup you will legit have to think about it yeah. um, my bust is Joe Mixon uh, I mean when is it time that we just Call Joe Mixon a bust on the season, man. It has been bad and bad and more bad, and yet we just keep thinking it's going to happen, and it's just not, man. Like it's, I guess it's getting slightly better. I mean, 93 yards on the ground last week was good. He got over 100 yards from scrimmage total. But overall, man, this has been a really bad season for him. So yeah, I, I just it's disappointing that for sure. I mean, this is a first round pick in a lot of second leagues. round pick. Yeah, second round easily. Pick, you know, I got him in one. It was a best ball league. <laughs> totally kicking myself. I went. Oh, I took Cook in the other league. I'll take Mixon in this one. Fuck, <laughs> that sucks. So, uh, not not working Oops. out for me in that one. Clearly. <laughs> So, uh, you know, that that's what happens when you play in too many leagues. You try to diversify your uh, your assets a little bit, and uh, it didn't yeah. work out. But, yeah, I mean, playing – I know Baltimore has been, been a team that's been giving up a lot of yardage and a lot of points, but, I mean, this city offense just isn't getting it done, especially on the ground. So, I got mixed it again as my bust. I think I picked him last week or the week before. I forget. I, I keep. I feel like I'm picking on mixing a lot. So <laughs> probably. But again, it's it's a valid pick because he's been crap. So uh, I'm going with Lev Bell. Uh, I mean, yeah, he'll probably be worthwhile in the passing game again. But I think this is the week Dallas really needs to get back onto the snide, you know, the winning path, and uh, you know. The Eagles' defense just totally decimated the Jets, uh, but the running game was was okay. So, you know, I just feel like Lev Bell could do something, but with Darnold back, I feel like he's going to need to pass the ball if they want to have any kind of attempt to win this. So, PPR, he could still hold some more value, but standard leagues, I'm staying away from Lev Bell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. Um, so my receiver here is going to be Will Fuller. And, you know, we, we've mentioned his name a couple of times. Obviously, at this point, everybody knows he had a huge week, like 50-plus points in PPR and half PPR leagues. Um, <laughs> Field Yates put something up, a Twitter post last week. It was pretty funny. Um, Will Fuller sees the stats coming into today. This was during Sunday's games. 14 catches, 183 yards, and zero touchdowns. Obviously, people weren't starting him last week, right? And for good reason. Will Fuller stats today. 14 catches, 217 yards, and three touchdowns. So he mul- he doubled his catches, m- more than doubled his yards, and tripled, well, infinitely increased his, t- his touchdowns if you really want to get uh, – you know, particularly about it, but let's just go with tripled, right? I, so, I actually had a guy in a dynasty league was like, who threw me an offer out right as the game ended. 
Will Fuller for my first round pick in Dynasty next year. And I went, go away from me. <laughs> you are a turd. Come oh, on. God, dude, like, come on. You think I'm going to buy one week of this? Like, no way. He's not getting close to this. I'm going to say it right here, right now. All you D-Hop owners, get ready for a monster week for D-Hop. It is his turn. It's his turn. He's got to go. He's going to go all Adam Thielen on Deshaun this week. He should, man. You know? He absolutely yeah, should. I would. But, like, he, it, this, this is, this is going to happen. Like, he's going to come crashing back down to earth, and D-Hops is going to go off, dude. Yep. All right. So my bust receiver here is a guy I mentioned earlier, uh, and that's OBJ. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this has to do the with the bust on the season. No, bust on the week. Oh, okay. Um, I mentioned his <laughs> name earlier uh, when I was talking about Diggs. I know. I was trying to be funny, but into... obviously you didn't think it was very funny. Okay. He's a bust on the season. I, is mean, that what I said? I'm good, I'm good with it. I say the week because I meant the season. Okay. Which would include this week. So, <laughs> both. Let's He's all. All of the above. OBJ. <laughs> <You must. laughs> um, so, my bust for this week is OBJ. Um, but, yeah, I, I think a lot of this has to do with Mayfield. I mean, he's just hasn't been what everybody thought he was going to be. Um, you know, and I, I don't know if maybe just the pressure has gotten to Cleveland because they were, you know, blown up so much, you know, coming into the season. But, you know, this was a big deal, big trade for them, and he just hasn't performed. I mean, hell, he's almost looked better as a passer than as a receiver. So. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> um, so whatever. Well, you know, and, and he doesn't have an easy matchup this week with Seattle. So that's yeah. uh, that's my, my play. Seattle's defense isn't what they used to be, but yeah. It's... No, but they're, they're still decent. So. Yeah. All, All right, right let's so defenses. Yeah, so I'm I'm picking the Broncos, Tennessee. I mean, I pretty much already said it all right. I mean, I think this game's going to be really low scoring. Tennessee's offense kind of blows, so Broncos, why not? Yeah, I, I'm just going to have to second your Broncos pick because I, I, there's none, nothing that I even remotely found interesting under yeah. our 40% threshold. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, like yeah. Tampa, maybe. Yeah, they but... were the only other one I kind of looked at. I mean, I saw Washington's I, I, ownership I skyrocketed, um, and that's yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure I would trust that everybody, <laughs> but okay, he would have fun starting the Redskins I, defense. I don't like that. Uh, I know it's the Dolphins, but it's one of those. You know, we all really wanted to start Travis Kels or not Travis, uh, Tyler Eifert last week against Arizona because it was Arizona. How'd that work out for you? Sometimes the matchup doesn't always mean it's a good matchup. It just means that yeah. it should be easy. You have to actually be somewhat good to perform. Yep. So, all right. All right, well, that pretty much wraps up our uh, our show tonight. Tune in uh, next week. We will be back um, and tune in, I guess, tomorrow once this gets posted. And uh, have a good week. Good luck with your with your matchups this week. Uh, may you win some games and uh, maybe some cash if you're into DFS. All righty. Cheers. See ya. <laughs>